All right, guys, we are live. <laughs> Sorry, we got kids going on around the house. Let's just make sure this is. <laughs> all right, let me just make sure this is all set real quick. All righty. <clears throat> all right let's just all right guys so we're live what's up everybody chat cats vision here welcome to another episode i am in philadelphia pennsylvania i got my twin brother jake here uh top tactic fishing and um so i got in late thursday night this was kind of a last uh minute trip for me to come out this way and Jake was actually supposed to come to Chattanooga, but uh, some things just didn't work out. So I said, hey, I'll just, you know, fly your way and um, do a, you know, a um, couple fishing sessions out there. And unfortunately, it's been kind of a bust, to be honest. We had a lot of rain come in today, so we didn't get to do any fishing today. But yesterday, uh, we fished hard, and it was still pretty tough with the – uh, pre funk, uh, pre uh, front coming in with this cold weather and all this rain. It's like the bite shut down pretty bad. I mean, we did catch some fish, and um, I did catch my first common carp uh, thanks to Jake. We actually fished a creek called Darby Creek, uh, which is part of the John Hines Wildlife Refuge that feeds, I guess, right into the Delaware River. And I, you know, as surprising as it is, I've never caught a common carp before. So Jake was like, Hey, you know, let's try to get you your first common carp. And I was like, okay, that's fine. You know, and I've caught one grass carp, uh, but never a common carp. So that's rare. I know. It's rare to catch a grass carp and never catch a common carp. That's why they're actually pretty common to catch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pun intended, right? Um, so yes, yeah, yeah, guys, we're just having a great time. Um, so I thought we'd do a you know brief Q and A session. Um, if you were, if you were around around Christmas time, I don't know if you guys were around then, but um, Jake and I did a live stream back in Ohio, and we had a lot of great support with that, and a lot of people wanted us to do another one together. So here we are. Um, but first let's just, you know, talk about Jake. Okay. Jake has a new YouTube channel. It's called top tactic fishing and he's one of the few anglers in the Philadelphia area that has a YouTube channel outside of, uh, Leo Shang with extreme Philly fishing and Chris, uh, McEntee with sea money fishing. Jake, um, is kind of on the, he's trying to kind of get on the rise a little bit. Um, so guys check out his channel. I have it in the video uh description here um of this live stream i'm actually going to see if i can actually uh copy and paste it real quick and put it in the comments box here there you guys go um you should have gotten that right there and so just you know um show some support uh for jake and uh subscribe to his channel he uh usually uploads videos on the flatheads he catches on the Schuylkill River. Lately it's and, been more carp. More, more yeah, more lately carp. it's been carp because the carp are about to go on the spawn and uh, the bite's getting pretty good for carp fishing. But um, Jake will try to upload a video like once a week or something yeah, for you guys uh, just to have that. So mm -hmm. anyway, um, other than that, guys, um, we've caught some catfish um, while I've been on this trip, just, you know, small channel cats. Uh, the big thing was just trying to target my first common carp. And like I said, I got in late Thursday night, so we only fished for one day and got to spend time with him and see his kids, uh, which is my niece and nephews and so forth. And um, But, yeah, we're having a great time. I'll be flying out early tomorrow morning, so I won't be fishing here tomorrow at all. But uh, I'll be coming back again. So, anyway, if you guys have any questions you want to ask, go ahead and just type away. Anything. Anything and, um, you know, so we'll just keep this live stream going for about a half hour or so. And if we have good questions, we'll keep going. And, um, anyway, so let's, let me kind of just start from the top here and, uh, let's see. Do crawdads make good bait, Sean? Um, yeah, I mean, they do. People catch bass with them. Um, I don't personally use them though. 
usually when I'm catching bass, I use shiners, live shiners or live shad. I hear the carp wax will eat them too. Yeah, yeah, they will. They can, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I actually caught a, a smallmouth buffalo on a live shiner. I think it was like four years ago. It was a 31 pound smallmouth buffalo on eight pound test. Right. Looks like we got people from the Netherlands. Nice to meet you there. Pete Flores, Mez, Arizona. What's up? What's up, man? Uh, Let's see here. Yeah, country girl catfishing. Yeah, the struggle's real. I get skunked every now and then, too. So let's see here. We almost got skunked yesterday. Luckily we yeah, luckily we got something. Yeah. Uh, let's see. When does Jake upload uh, Flat State Outdoorsman? You can answer that yeah, question. Yeah, it's, you know, the last few weeks it's usually been two videos uh, every every seven or eight days. So I'm going to be at least trying to put one up once a week if I can. So luckily I'm actually off for the next two weeks. So I'm hoping that I can put some more videos out soon. But on average it's going to be one video a week. All right, Jordan Holmes, what would be your favorite bait for flatheads? Um, I don't know. Like, I mean, it's really cool to see a flathead take a live bluegill or something, but I typically do better using cut bait on flat on for the flatheads. How about for you? What for you me, say? I usually use a cut bluegill and live bluegill. Really, any kind of sunfish is what I'll use. Pumpkin seeds, green sunfish. However, it would be cool to catch a flathead on a lure, like a plastic bait or something. That would be pretty cool. Now, I've also caught in flatheads on artificial bait. Um, there's a, it's called Conowingo Dam. It's actually in the border of Pennsylvania and Maryland. You can really jig, you just jig a Mr. Twister tail and you dye the tail in like a chartreuse garlic scent. It's called Spike It. You can get it at Walmart or Dick's and them flatheads will tear that up. I mean, they love those artificial baits, those Mr. Twister tails and try to get the biggest one you can and they'll, they'll and they love those. So... I'm actually going to be trying to put a video out soon of catching big flatheads using artificial bait. Uh, Sean, what is the best way to prep crawdads? I uh, really can't give you an answer on that one since I've never done it before. Uh, I think most people trap them, actually, the crawdads. So uh, I'm not sure. There's traps for crawdads that people do. <clears throat> Let's see, mainline pounds. Uh, when catfishing, if you guys don't know, usually I'm fishing the Tennessee River, fishing for my boat, and I'm fishing in pretty good current. So I have 50-pound main test line on my um, level level line trolling reels with an 80-pound leader line. But if I'm fishing from the bank, I actually go a little bit lighter. But I'm usually fishing for my boat anyway. Um, how about you? I use anywhere between 30 and 40-pound um, uh, braid with a 50-pound monoliter. Um, so, and Jake actually uses braid on his reels. I use monofilament. Only because I'm casting from the bank and I usually use the braid more for casting distance. And that's really the only reason why. And sometimes even in a current, the braid can sometimes, you know, do pretty well. Um, but I usually just like the braid just for, you know, farther castings as I am from the bank. And sometimes it can be a little difficult to kind of get it in the spot where you need to. Uh, Brian, ever been fishing at Cumberland City? I have not. Glenn, flatheads fight harder than blue cats and channels? Um, I think pound for pound, channel catfish fight the hardest. Uh, but I think flatheads fight harder than blues. Um, but flatheads probably have the hardest pull down than a, ch than a channel or a blue. I think they have the hardest pull down. But I think as far as fighting just pound for pound, the channel catfish are the hardest. Um, let's see. Yeah. Who's the older brother? I'm older. Yeah. And wiser. Huh. I'm the one that kicked Jake out of the womb first. <laughs> That's a good question, Lander. Uh, let's see. Why is your channel name Chat Cats Fishing when your name is Joe? It's a good question, uh, Patrick. Uh, Chat <laughs> is, uh, <clears throat> short for Chattanooga and Cats is short for Catfish. So it's just a, um, shortened term. Chat for Chattanooga, Cats for Catfish. Have I been to Pigeon Forge, Tennessee? Yes, I actually caught some trout up in Gatlinburg. Actually, we did yeah. uh, a few years we ago. We actually brought our nephews and niece out there, and we caught some nice trout there. I don't know if you put a video on that. Did you? I don't think so. I don't think I was using the GoPro then. Right. Um, let's see here. 
Um, how do you feel about raw chicken? Uh, a big fisher and fresh bait is hard to come by. Uh, raw chicken is best to use when drift fishing, actually. Um, you can use it while you're bank fishing or anchor fishing from a boat. Um, but I typically catch really good numbers using like chicken breast and I just free line. I actually have a video on my channel, free lining chicken. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm just usually just casting it out and letting the current just drift me back. And we actually, uh, we did, me and Joe actually did a catfishing tournament a couple of years ago and we use chicken livers and we actually ended up winning the tournament so chicken livers actually hold up pretty well if you're fishing from the bank too the only problem you can have is that it can be hard for the liver to actually stay on your hook so um but chicken livers even like joe said you know chicken breast that those two baits are pretty good if you're fishing from the bank so yeah raw chicken will work just fine <clears throat> what line do you use i use monofilament it's berkeley big game uh fishing line and it and it holds up well Is that so the green one? yeah um we got a fan from tokyo thanks for watching david i'm giving you a shout out uh dagger underscore david eight are drum good to eat um frank i've never had drum before i couldn't tell you buddy uh multis uh oh, excuse me mile c multi fishing thank you so much yeah uh, yeah guys we reached twenty thousand subs so it's pretty big milestone in my um youtube channel so i will be doing a giveaway sometime in the next week or two uh so keep on the lookout for that let's see endomitis fishing what's up joe you caught some nice flies at gunnersville yeah i was with ty conkle fvcatfish.com and we had a really great day. I actually, the last video I uploaded was part one of two of the trip at Gunnersville with Ty Congo. So the next video comes out tomorrow. That was an epic day for sure. When you're fishing your urban ponds, what is your go-to rig? Uh, Pete Flores, I would, um, I, I'll, I'll answer that one first. Um, usually when I fish ponds, Pete, I'm really not fishing for catfish. I'm actually fishing for bass. So I'll use like a weightless uh, Senko um, on a off shank worm hook. And uh, that's really what I'm going for. If I'm going for bluegill or other sort of panfish, I'll use wax worms or something like that. Maybe a, spot, maybe a small split shot you can use on there. Yeah, you can if you need some weight on your line. Um, I have caught catfish out of ponds and I'll just use like a um small um pretty much size sinker yeah, like you to, said split shots you're or trying something. to catch your first carp on corn and you're catching that. yeah i know <laughs> yeah so yeah so yesterday's trip uh I, you know i was trying to get my first common carp and i caught two catfish actually on corn which you know you can't get they, away. they call them chat cats for a reason yeah i can't get so, away from it it seems like but <laughs> um tiger shrimp is is good cat bait i have to try that sometime randy the mask wrestler this for you both of you have one bait to use for catfish what would it be if it was one bait i had to use it'd be cut skip jack herring how about for you i would be cut bluegill i even had some i've caught some eight pound channels on cut bluegill too so i'd definitely cut bait uh what bait you recommend for bank fishers who can't get live bait if you can't get any Bait. I would probably use night crawlers, chicken um, livers. Chicken livers you know, would shrimp work. works well too. Um, yeah, they can't get live bait. Um, but let's see. I would. I mean, the stink baits you can use, like Sudden Impact, Team Catfish, Sun Impact, uh, Secret Seven. Uh, those will work just fine. Do catfish shy away from braid? No, they do not, Glenn. Um, I'm just not really into braid. I like mono. They stretch. Uh, mm -hmm. And I feel like I have more, I feel like I can fight the fish better if I'm using monofilament. So it's just a, just a preference thing really. But no, you can use braid. Braid is fine. The only time I use braid when fishing is if I'm bottom bouncing with like a three-way swivel. Because at that point, I feel like I can actually control my bait as it's hitting the bottom. But it's just a preference thing. Best bait for channel cats, Sean? Um, Chicken livers yeah if you're wanting to get like a lot of eaters a lot of numbers like jake said chicken livers will be fine night crawlers if you're wanting to go for like the big channel catfish i don't know maybe use like cut bait or something 
So I think channels like anything that's more bloody. They kind of like your bloody kind of being. Uh, they're they're really attracted to that kind of stuff. Uh, Brad, I've never tried Slim Jims, but I know people have used them to catch fish. So that would be maybe I can do that in a challenge or something. That'd be pretty cool. What is your favorite type of fish to catch? Uh, lander? Um, hmm. Flatheads. Well, for catfish, probably the flatheads, but um, overall speaking, I don't know. I have to really think about that one because that's kind of opening up the question to saltwater fishing as well. So I'd have to think about that one, Lander. Are minnows good for flatheads? Yes, they are, Bobby. Okay, those will work just fine. What would you say a good leader lamb brand and a good leader line? Um, I use Andy. Yep, that's fishing what I line. Use too. A N D E on Andy. You can get it at Walmart, Dick's, Bass Pro Shop. And you said what pound should it be? It really just depends. Um, I use an eighty pound leader, but that's because I'm fishing in pretty good, moderate to heavy current. Okay, if you're fishing like in a lake or something that doesn't really have any current you can probably get away with like a 40 pound liter line or 30 you know so it's just it really just depends and it really also depends on the size of catfish you're going for what up chris flores money river catfish you, you put on here the guys from hooks that are usa are working on a 10 inch soft plastic crawdad for flathead fish that's, that's awesome, awesome. And I meant to and I meant to do this earlier, but Chris Flores guys has been he had a video come out. I think it was like two videos ago where he is doing a challenge for everybody to pick up trash when they fish. So and it's to encourage us fishermen to um, leave the place better than we found it. And uh, he has a video up on his channel. Um, I'm gonna see if I can find it right now. Let me just let me just find this real quick. Uh, just give me a second, fellas. There it is. Um, let's see. Here it is. I'm gonna copy and paste the link in here for you guys. For you guys to go check that out. Um, Let's see here. Yep, should have put it on. Oh, thank you, thank you, Chris, for the donation. I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, guys, go ahead and check out that video. And it's just not for it's just not for us YouTube fishermen. It's for everybody. We're all part of this, so we all need to be leaving the place better than we found it because it's it keeps a healthy place as we fish. And so I really appreciate you, Chris, doing that for sure. Thanks. Um, thank you also for. Um, uh, the 20,000 there. Appreciate that. Let's see. Now, let me kind of go back up towards the comments here. What's a good fishing pole for rivers and lakes in your opinion? Um, I use the ugly sticks. If you're first starting out, ugly sticks are a gener generally a pretty, yeah, good pretty good brand, affordable. Um, they're very resilient type raw. They have a lot of backbone and plenty of sensitivity for you to discern even the smaller fish. Uh, would you agree with that? Yeah, ugly sticks, it's, you know, especially for the price, you know, it's, it's a really good pull. If you're wanting to get something a little more pricey that's still pretty durable, I recommend the uh, St. Croix rods. Oh, St. Croix is a good brand, And too. they actually have a, a catfish line. It's called Mojo Cat. They have spinning reels. I mean, uh, they have uh, rods for um, spinning reels, bait caster reels, but they can be a little bit pricey, but they're they're pretty good, pretty light rods. But Joe's right, though. If you're looking for something that's just cheap and durable, the ugly stick is the way to go. Magic Man, do you guys use Skipjack? I use Skipjack. Uh, in Jake's River, the Schuylkill, you guys don't get Skipjack that run through there. So You but, get Shad. We'll get Shad that come up. Yeah, you guys get the American Hickory Shad. And is, that, is that what it's called? Yeah, we'll get Hickory Shad, Gizzard Shad. Um, but yeah, so, no Skipjack, unfortunately. Clarence, what size is my boat? It's a 17 foot boat. G3 uh, DLX 1756. Um, let's see here. Roman, I live in Tennessee. I live in Pennsylvania. We're both from Ohio, though. 
Flat state outdoorsman. I have fished from a kayak. Um, I have a kayak. I plan on doing a lot more fishing this year from my kayak. So let's and see. a good fishing kayak is going to be Ocean Kayak as well as Hobie. Those are some yep, pretty, those good, are good, pretty good, really good kayaks. Brian, your PB is seventy nine pounds. That's awesome. That's a heck of a fish right there. Congrats on that. Awesome. Have I been to Delaware? I have not. But you, Jake, you've been. To, have you fished Delaware? The Delaware before? There's a Delaware River, but I've actually never fished in the state of Delaware. If I go more south, I usually hit Conewingo Dam, which actually goes through Delaware to get there. But no, I really haven't fished Delaware. <laughs> Patrick, when will you try to break your PB? Uh, my PB is 90 pounds, so... Uh, He's going to break it this year. <laughs> we'll try. I mean, I, I usually... I mean, typically, if I get a big catfish, it's usually around 50 pounds or... Um, a little bit heavier, but anything really over uh, 70 pounds is I'm not going to say it's rare, but it's uncommon. I mean, at least for me, but um, it, it we'll see, you know, just keeping those fingers crossed. You guys know how it is with fishing. The more time you put into it, more persistence and perseverance than it could likely happen. Um, and then for you, what's your PB catfish, Jake? 36 pounds. 36 pounds. Blue catfish from the Tennessee River, of course. And there's no blue catfish in Pennsylvania, so when the catfish we do have are going to be your flatheads and your channels. And we do have some white catfish, too, which I don't know if you guys have white catfish in your... I think we do, yeah. Uh, I believe we do. Francisca, what are some good areas to go fishing without a boat? I live in Dayton, Tennessee, so you're kind of in the Ray County area, I believe. You can try fishing Soddy Creek. Um, and usually right around uh, – um, oh, no, the Ocoee is actually in Cleveland, Tennessee area. But um, I know there's a Sequoia nuclear discharge up on Chickamauga Lake. Now, you can't get access to that um, as well from – the bank but that whole there's like a camp right around there that i've seen some people pull some good fish and it's best to fish at night if you're going to go there um other than that i can't think of anything from the top of my head um but i'll tell you what um look on google maps and see if you can find some bank access let's see do I prefer heads for flatheads, catfish bill? Um, I haven't done well on the heads this year. Jake has, though. Yeah, with cut bait, we usually always have a flathead, usually take the head. And I think that, I don't know if that's just like a, you know, certain season where more catfish will take the heads, um, but I haven't done as well on the heads this year at all. So, but... Um, I don't know, Catfish Bill. I think it's just the mood they're in, I guess. If they're feeding heavy, they'll they'll take it. But if not, then, you know, they won't take it. So um, let's see here. What is the best bait for blues in the lake? Uh, cut bait. So Magic Man, I would use a cut bait, whether it's cut bluegill, um, any, any cut shad. Um, really just use the bait fish that are in the, in the lake. That is in the lake. So... Or just channel cat, um, I think is like 13 pounds on the Ohio River. Uh, so and mine is 8 pounds. And Jake's is 8. Caught him in the Scooper River in Philadelphia. I caught another good one two years ago below Chickamauga Dam, fishing in the spillway holes there. Um, and that was probably around 11 or 12 pounds, but I think mine's like around 13. Do, I, do you ever use shad? Yes, I do use shad. I have a couple videos out that I've posted in the past couple months where I've actually free-lined shad uh, below the dam to catch catfish. But typically, when catfishing, I use cut skipjack. So, there's a, I mean, it's nicknamed catfish candy. They just, the blues just love that to death. Best bass fishing soft plastic for small ponds? Um, Woodsman 101. Uh, that that depends on the season. Um, you know, a lot of people love the Senko, okay, because the Senko is like Senko is um, um, but I'll be honest with you, Woodsman. I I I like top water bass fishing more than anything. I just like seeing a bass blow up on the surface to take your bait, and I'll use like a spook or something, and 
Um, but like I said, I, I really, I really fish more for catfish. Um, every now and then I'll go to like a pond or something just to have a change in pace of my fishing. Are carp good to eat, Bobby? Um, I've never had carp. Same here, never had carp. I don't know how many people actually take home carp to eat. There's probably some out there. Carp are unfortunately considered a trash fish, uh, which, you know, a lot of the people who fish for carp don't get a lot of recognition, not just from us fishermen, but from the state. Like the state doesn't, you know, uh, seem to recognize carp angling and i think it's because they're not really highly sought for but you know they're a very highly underrated fish they fight super hard i was actually surprised with the common carp i caught yesterday just the fact that it just never gave up and they, they're they're really hard fighters uh definitely a highly underrated fish and jake will tell you the same thing right. um but out in europe like if you ever go to Europe, carp angling is like highly prized. And they like, get big out there. You're talking like your 40s, so probably some 50s too. Um, so but, it's it's weird because here in America, bass fishing is like the big the biggest thing. Which don't get me wrong, I love bass fishing, but it's like it's just highly prized. But in Europe, it's the carp. Mm -hmm. So interesting how people consider it like the worst fish here, but it's like the best fish in Europe. Right. It's interesting. Um, let's see here. Got decals I can put on my boat. I do have some decals. I ordered 500 of them. I'm going to be opening up my Chat Cats fishing store in the next week. It's been just taking some time. I got some shirts made. Um, those should be coming in the mail in the next couple of days or so. Um, and I do have some decals. Clarence, I will let you know when that happens. Ultimate catfishing trip. Um, <laughs> I think the best trip I had was when I was by myself where I caught a 64, a 59, and a 58 and lost another one that was right around 60. And that was like two summers ago when they had the floodgates going below Chickamauga Dam. And it was a new spot I had fished. And, um, but I'd probably say that was my ultimate catfishing trip because it was like giant after giant after giant. How about you? Probably when I was with you when you caught those three. Oh back yeah, to back thirty. Like I think it was like yeah, three fish that were in the thirties. I think it was like a thirty-six, a thirty-two, and then like a thirty. Yeah, Jay came with me two years ago and was did. It three years ago, did was it three years ago? I think two thousand fourteen sometime. Can you come to Okeechobee? I would like to, Benny. You know, I, I would like to travel so much more. Um, but you know when you have kids and you know a wife your time is limited that's for sure i have um, to get permission from the wife <laughs> yep let's see here have i ever caught a well catfish before i have not have i ever fished in a lake yes technically I've, my home water is nickajack lake and it's technically the tennessee river but tva tennessee valley authority has dammed up the river mm -hmm. into different lakes so from those dams Let's see here. PB smallmouth from Chickamauga. Uh, my PB, I'm going to say Nickajack. I think my, I don't think I've caught a bass actually up on, no, I take that back. I have caught a couple of bass on Chickamauga Lake. I think the biggest may be like around a pound and a half to two pounds. But on Nickajack, my biggest bass is five pounds, and it was a smallmouth uh, right on the wing wall there. But I've caught plenty of smallmouth in the two to three pound range there. So I think mine was five pounds up in Canada. Yep. There's some big smallmouth up there. Randy, do I like circle hooks? That's all I use when catfishing is circle hooks. They're self-setting, so they do really well. Right. Let's see. Ethan, best bait for catfish. I think we answered it before. It just depends. Um I'm just going to say cut bait is probably cut bait, the best. Night crawlers, you know, just to, you know, even. But uh, it also depends on what size catfish you're going for. Like if you just want numbers, like um, an eater, baits, eater yeah. size catfish between one to 10 pounds, then yeah, you can go with like night crawlers, chicken livers. Uh, you know, you can go all day trying to try different baits too. But Even bread, people have had some good success on bread too. Do you catch bait with cast nets? I do sometimes. I haven't used my cast net in a while, but uh, I 
when I do get bait, it's typically Threadfin or Gizzard Shad. Now, Jake, I, I think in his state, you guys can't use cast nets, can you? Why is that, you think? I have no idea. Pennsylvania has so many rules and regulations on where you can fish, how you can fish, how many rods you're allowed to use when you're on the water. There's so many rules and regulations in this state, but I think you're right. I don't think we're allowed to use cast nets, but I'm sure there's people that, that do. I actually have a cast net, but I, I, I'm someone who likes to follow the rules, so I don't I don't like to cheat or anything like that. So it's good, man. Yeah, man. Uh, best pond catfish bait, Woodsman 101. Uh, I mean, you've been asking a lot of questions. Good. I like it. Uh, I would probably say, night I mean, crawlers. yeah, for my personal thing, I do best fishing big night crawlers on the bottom uh, for catfish. But you can still use cut bluegill. That'll work. That's yeah, not, not really, a problem at all. Look at it this way. So if you want to catch catfish in any kind of water, you want to know what other kind of fish are in that water. And there's probably going to be some bluegills or sunnies or maybe even perch. So catch some of the smaller fish, cut them up or fillet them, and then just put it on a hook. And I'm guaranteed you'll probably catch a catfish. <clears throat> Country girl catfishing. Uh, I have not tried the CJ's punch bait yet. I will be using it this summer. When the water temp gets really warm, I plan to use it. I still have it. Yes. I appreciate that gift, by the way. That was a nice Christmas gift. Endomitis, man, just wait till tomorrow's video. We loaded up on monsters when I was fishing with Ty uh, last week. So it was like back to back to back to back giant flatheads. Just wait for the video. You're going to hear a lot of oh dad and oh son in there and everything because it was super exciting. And if you guys don't know, I, always, I I typically get very excited when there's a big fish just because it's like, oh, it's big. And you just, you know, the adrenaline kicks oh, in. Dad. And, oh, dad. <laughs> um, yeah, the adrenaline kicks in and everything. And so you guys will definitely enjoy that video. So hopefully I'm not too annoying though. But <laughs> uh, let's see. I like the old bull dance recipe from the early 80s to, to eat his own. Yeah, Bill Dance. Uh, Bill Dance has actually come I, I come knew, around. He yeah. he used to be strictly bass fishing, but now he's actually kind of converted to the dark side, which is catfishing now. So I use one of his reels too. He has a Bill Dance uh, catfish reel. It's actually holds up pretty well. Hold on, guys. I'm just. We got a lot. We got a lot more comments to go. Let's see here. You spider line bidding. That's good. Um, let's see. Decals. I do have decals, Clarence. Clarence, send me an email, okay? If you want a decal. But like I said, guys, I'm going to be opening up my Chat Cats fishing store soon. You'll be able to order some there. Let's see. Or, yeah, go ahead, Jake. Read that one. Largest catfish is a flathead, ten pounds. What parts on the river would I catch twenty or thirty pound cats? If you're fishing from the bank, you want to be fishing like the mouth of a creek or like an inlet area. Bridges, bridge pilings, drop offs. You know, structure. You know, flatheads love structure. Yeah, I was gonna say that. Definitely bridges. Um, I would also try below a dam if you have a dam yeah. that you can fish. If you're fishing from a boat, then it's pretty much the same principle. Uh, I actually catch a lot of my big fish from, you know, or right near the the bank there. Uh, so that's where Jake said drop offs, marking structure, um, and deeper holes and everything. So if you want to get into the 20, 30 pound cats, I would my first recommendation would be try to find a dam that holds some big fish. Or even like if you, after a lot of heavy rain, sometimes we'll even find some of the big ones like in some creeks too. Like what Joe was saying, into the mouth of like a, a river. So Benny is saying, give me a shout out. What up, Benny? Is it Crow or Crowell or Crowell? Sorry. Oh, it's Benny Crow. Benny Crow? Yeah. Okay. Hey, Benny. Uh, which one is chat? I am chat cats fishing. Okay. I'm going bald. I got the receding hairline here. And this is talk time. You can tell he doesn't age very well. <laughs> very well. funny, Jerry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, Kaylee says good night. <laughs> uh, my wife's on here. Kaylee says good night, Dada. I love you, Kaylee, sweetie pie. I'll be seeing you tomorrow.
Al Bob! Al Bob is one of my students. Okay, how's it going, Al Bob? Uh, what reel do I use? I use um, an Akuma CLX300L, okay, when uh, fishing for my boat. But if I'm bank fishing, it's typically like spinning reels and usually catfish combos I'll use or something. Eli Gouts, oh, Dad. Oh, Dad. Uh, are drum good bait? Um, Nash, I've never use drum as bait but i have seen people actually catch catfish on cut drum so they do work how about you i don't know anything of people we don't even get much you, drum you guys don't get here. drum around here that's right but hey okay. man you should try it and let us know are we doing the catfish tournament tonight we are not but i'm kind Is there of one tonight not that i know of hey joe g if you can reply back just let us know where that catfish tournament is at appreciate it Let's see. Yes, they are. Is chicken liver good for catfish? Yes, it is. One hundred percent, it is. I mean, you want a catfish tournament on chicken liver? Tidal bait is good for catfish in a small pond. Savage Warrior, try using night crawlers. Um, you can try cut bluegill, stink bait, even chicken livers too. Why not? You yeah, know, just good to experiment a little bit and see what works best. But Joe's right. Yeah, your night crawlers are going to be pretty good for that. Why don't you fish with stink bait? Nash, I, I use stink bait every now and then, but I'm typically fishing for big catfish. I usually release all the fish I catch. So, um, and the channel catfish are the, usually the ones that hit the stink baits. Um, and we don't really get big channel cats down in Tennessee. Usually channel cats are more uh, better quality up north around New York and Wisconsin and up in those states. and. But down here in Tennessee, or down in Tennessee, the biggest you'll get is like, you'll be lucky if you get like a 15 pounder, seriously. Um, but up in Wisconsin, 15 pounders are like nothing or something, you know? So, um, but I'm not against using stink baits. It's just if I wanted to get numbers, like fast numbers, I'd probably use a stink bait or something. Right. Let's see here. Flat State Outdoorsman, I'm giving you a shout out, buddy. Let's see. Do you use carp for catfish bait? I do not flat state outdoorsmen. Uh, I, I think I know people who have used carp for catfish around here, and they're actually pretty good. Pretty good bait to use. Best bait for carp is fiberglass. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Interesting. The mask wrestler, what, what no blues in PA? You want to explain that a little bit? So the closest river or body of water um, where blues are closest to Pennsylvania is actually going to be the Potomac River, uh, which is in Washington, D.C., which is about two hours, two and a half hours from where I live. I've heard reports that there's also some blues in the Susquehanna River. So there are some in Pennsylvania, but they're just not as common. So it'll probably take some years before blues actually start making their way in Pennsylvania. But as far as the Schuylkill River goes, which is in Philadelphia, I have not heard of any reports of blues being in there. I could be mistaken on that. But I would think there's probably going to be at least one, <laughs> one or two or more. So, But as far as the catfish industry goes in Pennsylvania, it's mostly going to be your – I mean, in Philadelphia, it's going to be your flat, your flatheads and your channels. Well said. Let's see here. 75 pound carp in Europe. Yep, Europe is really known for, for carp angling. That's a nice size carp too. Gee, 75 pounds. Let's see here. Why don't you, okay, ah, I'm trying to, let's see. Hold on guys, I just wanna keep. Scroll up a little bit. So. Yeah, right there. Let's see here. Why don't we've already answered that? Hello from South Jersey, Hello, Mr. South Senko, Jersey. How's it going, man? Hello from Chattanooga, Pumpkin Spice Bleach. How's it going? I'm coming back to Chattanooga tomorrow. You can use cast nets in PA, but you need the extra license in yeah. some lakes. Yeah, there's always some fee associated with it. Zach, biggest catfish I've caught is 90 pounds. Now the biggest blue I caught is 90. Biggest flathead is 54. Biggest channels, like I said, 13 pounds and. 36 pound blue, 32 pound flathead, 8 pound channel. Chris, have a good night. Appreciate it. Let's see. You too, Chris. Take care, man. Let's see here. 
What's the biggest fish you've caught at Watts Bar? Uh, I think it's like 25 pounds if I have if memory serves me right. Um, yeah, I'm telling you, man, flatheads will break your gear if you're underpowered. So I don't go up to Watts Bar very often just because it's further away from where I live. But I think it's like 25 pounds or something is my biggest fish up there. Great water up there. I would like to fish it more. Let's see. Where's good locations in and around Philadelphia to catch big cats? From Christian 472721. Uh, Schuylkill River is where you're going to find out the majority of your big catfish. Um, I'm going to give them maybe... If you're going to be fishing the Schuylkill River, I mean, there's a lot of bridges down there. The flatheads usually at night just kind of cruise up and down that any, river. Any, any part of the river in Philadelphia, you'll find some good size catfish there. What works good for also, also, I want to piggyback on that real quick, too. Um, if you want to go outside of Philadelphia a little bit, Phoenixville, Montclair, Okay, if you're willing, because the Scoot River does kind of work its way up towards the middle of the state. Um, so there's actually, I, I've heard the flatheads actually get a little bit bigger the farther away you actually get outside of Philadelphia. So just well, keep that in mind. What works good for strong current and high water? Uh, as far as fishing, well, make sure you have heavy weight to keep your bait on the bottom and you want to be anchor fishing. So. And I would not use live bait if you're fishing in extremely heavy current. Uh, cup bait would be the way to go in that situation, unless you find slack water or something. Because if you're using live bait in very strong current, it's just going to wash that bluegill out and they'll probably die or something. So you really want to um, use cup bait in that situation. North Carolina, you do get big catfish. Uh, Lake Gaston and Bugs Island are big lakes over there for big fish for sure. Let's see. What works from current? We already answered that. Mary, what are you all talking about? Well, we're talking about fishing. <laughs> Let's see. What is a better eating catfish channels? Actually, I heard, Glenn, that flatheads were the best eating catfish. Uh, People love them. Yeah, for some reason. Every time I go to the dam and catch flatheads, there's always somebody that wants to take one home. Mary, thank you for your words of inspiration. <laughs> that. Uh, let's see. What works? Uh, I feel like I'm scrolling. Let's see. Favorite rod and reel for catfishing? Um, I like the B&M Silver Cat Magnum rods. They run about $75, pretty pricey. Uh, but I've recently been using the Shatter Cat rods, and those work really good as well. And Rio would be, uh, I love the Akuma CLX um, 300. They're called a classic XT. Uh, very good reels. They're light. They're not heavy at all. And they hold up really well on big fish. So, um, but as far as spinning reels, I mean, I like the optics. I don't know if you guys have heard of the quantum optics reels. Those do well for me. The pen reels work really well for catfish too. Pen oh, battle. Yeah, I was going to say that next. The pen fierce. I have a pen fierce reel. Um, so do I, I don't trust the ugly stick reel as much? Oh, it's just the rod. <laughs> <laughs> did you fish with Leo? Yes, I did. Great guy. What's up, YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see here. What's a good place to fish for catfish in Nebraska? And by the way, I think it would be nice if you had Nebraska and fished. I don't know much about Nebraska besides that it's a state and it's out west or Midwest. They got some great wrestling out there, though. Um, you know, if you're going to be fishing for catfish, just fish your river or your lake and uh, try to find a dam. Okay, and if you have dams out that way, go where the dam is and fish right where the spillway is. Usually catfish love current and they're gonna be there. So you're fishing in ponds, just you know, make a perimeter around the pond and uh, just fish everywhere. Let's see here. Let's see. Thanks, man. What do you use to catch cats? Uh, 
I typically use Skipjack. So thank you, Jared, for the support. How big was your first carp? <laughs> it actually was pretty small. I think yeah. it was like a pound or something, to be oh, honest. Yeah. I'm telling you guys, I was catching more catfish on the corn than carp. But I, uh, I was actually there two days before, and I caught like a couple teenagers. Um, and there will be a video of that shortly, so be look out for that. But like I said, guys, the fishing just has not been good here since I've been here. It's very unfortunate. Like, before he came – the weather was like in the 70s it was great high 60s and then joe's like the bad omen and he is comes <laughs> in and like drops down to like the like today it was only 52 degrees and it was just like raining raining and rain but however it's gonna stop raining tomorrow and you know what that means the water's gonna be elevated be good for some flatheads i'm gonna be doing some flathead fishing probably in the next couple of days it's gonna warm up again uh, Michael Apps, what's playing on the TV? It's actually the Food Channel. It's actually reflecting on the yep. uh, glass right there. They're showing us how to uh, cook catfish. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Can't you cook? Right here. Uh, let's see here. Um, I think we're almost at the end of the, of the comments here. Um, you just caught an eight pounder five minutes ago, the Woodster. That's awesome. What kind of catfish was it? Was it a channel blue or a flathead? Let us know. Pumpkin spice bleach. I do bass fish every now and then. Uh, if I am, I usually just drift fish below it, you know, below a dam or something, and use live shiners. So I would like to try using live shad and get a big one. That'd be pretty cool to do. Let's see, Chris Johnson. Thank you, Danny Cow, for the donation. Appreciate that, buddy. Hope you're doing well. Um, you've been catching some monsters out there, man, in St. Louis. That's awesome. Uh, how's the fishing been lately? Let me know. Let's see here. This guy uh, just caught his first channel on failure in the Delaware River. Oh, congratulations, man. Let's see. Do you think of, there was a full moon? Do you think a full moon affect fishing? 100% it does. Um, you know, That's you're going to miss though. I don't know. Well, I mean, I the science behind it, but. you know, there's a lot of scientific studies behind, you know, the moon bite and the moon phase and how it changes, you know, the patterns of fishing and everything. I don't pay much attention to it. The only thing it does is that it, it shines so bright you know, on the water, and I think that can. Once we start just, laughing, it's I like it never stops. To, I just had to say it that. You. <laughs> we have these uh, flashlights on our GoPro, and I tend to really light up the place. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but. Um, I don't know. I mean, Chris Flores caught some pretty big flatheads, yeah, though. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think during a full moon, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Um, mm. all right, Tyler, you're hungry. Go eat some food, man. Oh, uh, let's see here. Uh, yes, pumpkin spice bleach. I will consider it. Started off slow, despite the abnormal warm weather. Now, only problem is flooding. Laugh out. Hey, man, um, you got some high water. That could be good um, in a way. Um, so maybe try to find some high water spots that you think would produce some fish. Um, have you ever caught a catfish on a bass lure? Um, Tyler? Oh, not plastics, I have, but not an actual. Like, Jake lure. has on plastics. I, well, it's a lure, yeah, technically. Exactly. But, um, I don't think I have, Tyler, to be honest. Just trying to. And we were it. actually going to try to do that when Joe was here. We were actually going to go to Conowingo Dam, but unfortunately, it's in spill conditions right now. So the wharf and is closed. And you're, you're actually not allowed to go in the water when it's the water's crazy like that. So you'll have to come back and we'll have to do a session where he tries to catch his first flathead on artificial bait um what do you use to catch cats uh jane i i typically use cut skipjack or cut shad 
live and cut bluegill. Uh, every now and then I'll be using a stink bait of some sort. Uh, you can use night crawlers. Um, so really, yeah, those are probably the go-to baits. You can, there's a lot of baits for catfish out there. Yes, Nash, I hear you. The gar can be terrible. You know, if they're in the area, you know, the catfishing can shut down pretty quick. So anyway, guys, um, let's just answer a couple more questions and then we're going to close this live stream down for the night. So we'll just take a couple more. Let's see. How do you rig your bait? Um, I typically use a Carolina rig tanner. And if I'm just using cut chunks of skipjack about, I don't know, probably this, this wide or something. And I'll just use the um, circle hook, just kind of go behind it and out. So it's showing the tip. But recently, a buddy of mine, mm -hmm. um, recently a buddy of mine said to actually hook it underneath of it so it keeps the gut pocket in. And that was actually a pretty, you know, clever way to do it because sometimes when I hook it, the gut pocket will actually come out. And it's like, oh, well, there goes the best part of the bait. So how about you for what? As far as you know how you rig your bait you just Carolina rig Carolina rig usually up yeah. simple it's easy it's effective and it never goes wrong really let's see do I prefer circle hooks yes I do let's see yeah, it's all I use to circle hooks because the J hook you actually have to set the hook so <clears throat> Favorite uh, tackle brands, Nash. Uh, I like Team Catfish. Um, let's see. Tangling with Catfish, that's pretty good too. Um, Mustad. B and M. Yeah, and B and M. I like them. Um, so, can you send some rigs? I'm just gonna put on. Here's the rigs that I use. Let's see. Carolina rig and the uh, Santee rig. Maybe those will kind of help you out. Best bait for catfish. I'm just going to type it out since I'm getting the same questions uh, over and over here. So, which is fine because I know some of you guys are still coming in. Put Bluey on there, Shad. Perch too. You guys don't get perch. Stink baits, guys. I recommend. Uh, um, you know. Team Catfish, uh, Ten Impact, and Secret Seven. But, like, uh, come on, man. Quit being idiotic. <laughs> Let's see here. I'm trying to think anything else for comments here. Where is a good spot for catfish? Um, really just... I mean, I would say below the dam, you'll get a lot of numbers. If you have a dam in your area, you'll definitely uh, get a lot of uh, eater-sized catfish there. And some big ones usually roam around the dams as well. If you're like in a pond, you want to try to fish the center of the pond. It's probably going to be the deepest part. Um, Drop-offs is, is good and structure. I mean, catfish in general, every kind of catfish love structure. Rocks, you know, bridges, pilings you know, branches in the water even, you know, down tree, log jams. You're going to find all your catfish around those areas too. <clears throat> all right. Hey, brother, Catfish Clothing, how's it going, man? Hope you're doing well. I'm um, looking forward to getting those shirts. So um, anyway, guys, we're going to go ahead and close this live stream down. I appreciate all the questions you guys had. Um, and like I said, make sure you guys check out uh jake's channel top tactic fishing um give him a subscription okay and um, you can also follow him on instagram as well at top tactic fishing so anyway guys we'll see you later uh make sure you uh look for tomorrow's video at 7 30 it's part two of the monster flathead catfish series so we'll talk to you later guys thanks for watching take care guys let's see here